Hey math kids, today we're going to talk about the process of induction. Um, so inductive thinking is where we kind of convince ourselves that something is true, but we don't necessarily prove it to be true. And so one example would be if we have a piece of ice <clears throat> and before we touch it, we instinctively know that it's going to be cold. Um, that's because every piece of ice we've ever touched before that is cold but we've never sat down and proved that every piece of ice forever will be cold. Um, we could, yeah, that's probably good enough there. Um, let's start with an example. It says, by examining the cases n equals 1, 2, 3, and 4, make a conjecture about the sum. So we have... 1 times 2, 2 times 3, 3 times 4, 4 times 5, and then n and n plus 1. And then we could also write that sum Okay. So if we sum this just to the first term, so if we just look at S1, that's just going to be 1 over 1 times 2, which is 1 half. If we sum it to the second term, we're going to get the first two, which is going to be 1 half plus 1 sixth. We get common denominators. We end up with 3 sixths plus 1 sixth, which gives us 4 sixths, which ends up being 2 thirds. All right. So now we got to do 3 and 4. So now we're going to add up those ones. So that's going to give us, just to save some writing, that's 1 half, that's 1 sixth, and that's 1 twelfth. If we get common denominators on that, this one needs twos, this one needs sixes. So we get six twelfths, two twelfths, and one twelfth. And um, six, seven, eight, nine, so that's nine twelfths. Divide those both by three, and that's three fourths. Now let's try the fourth one, so we get one half. 1 6, 1 12th, and then 1 20th. Once again, we need common denominators. Um, so if we do that, let's, um, let's actually do it in two steps. So I'm going to add these ones together. So I'm going to times this by 10. So we add those, and we end up with 11 twentieths. And then if we do these, I need to times this by 2 over 2. So that's 2 plus 1. So 3 over 12. If we reduce that one, we get 11 twentieths plus 1 fourth. And then it's easier to get that common denominator. So we're going to be 11 plus 5 over 20, so that's 16 over 20. Divide both those by 4, we get 4 fifths. All right, now if I write down my answers in order, we got 1 half, 2 thirds, 3 fourths, 4 fifths. Now, if I had to just guess what the next one is following this pattern, see how it goes 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5. It's probably going to be 5, 6, 6, 7, 7, 8. Now we didn't prove that it's going to be that, but the pattern seems like it's going to be that. Now if we're going to relate it to, you know, what the n value is. Um, so this is n 1, <coughs> 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it looks like it's just going to be n over n plus 1. 
for S7. Okay, once again, we just used inductive reasoning. We did not prove that to be true, but we tried it a few times, noticed a pattern, and then made a conclusion. Now, like I said, that's really useful, like in a math class where you kind of trust that things are gonna work out. Um, and we use it a lot in our everyday lives. We don't need to prove everything to ourselves. Okay, there's